Hey everybody, have you been wondering the correct way to send signal to your aux outputs on your Behringer XR series mixer? Well, I'm going to show you how to do that right now. Let's go! So the most common scenario when sending signal to your auxes is for a monitor mix. So we're going to operate under the assumption that that's what you're doing. So what we want to do first is set the channel to be pre-fader to your bus. Now what that means is that any signal you send to that bus is going to be set at a level that is independent from what's happening in your main mix. So you're able to change your main front of house mix without it affecting the amount of signal that's going to your monitor, which is ideal because if it was going post fader, meaning after the fader, any fader changes you made to your main house mix would also change the amount of level going to your monitor. And that is not ideal as your monitor mix would be all over the place and you'd never be hearing exactly the same thing. That can get quite confusing. So to change this setting on a PC or a Mac or Linux, this is what you would do. You're going to select the channel you want to affect and you're going to click on the sends tab. Now, for the bus that you want to affect, in this case, let's say bus one, we're gonna set it to pre-fader. But before you do that, have a look to the right because there's a little globe icon. And if it's highlighted, any change you make to pre or post fade is going to apply to all channels across your mixer. If you want to affect only the channel that you have selected, you wanna make sure the globe icon is turned off and it says changes affect selected channel. So once you've done that, you're free to change the tap point above the bus you're trying to affect. Again, in this case, bus one, we have it set to pre-fader. To do this on an iOS device, again, you're going to select your channel, then you're going to choose the sends tab, then over at the right hand side, there's an advanced tab and you wanna make sure that's turned on, which will give you a menu for all your tap points. Then you're going to select the bus that you want to affect. Again, in this case, we're doing bus one. And then once you've selected that bus, you're going to change the selection on the right-hand side to pre. And once you do that, you'll actually see the label beneath your bus change to match what you've selected. To make these changes on an Android device, again, select the channel you want to affect. Then press the sends button. Then the SE button will act the same way that the advanced button does on iOS, and it will open up a selection that pops up beneath each bus. Now in the Android version of the app, you also have the ability to make global changes just like you do on the desktop software. There's a little globe icon that appears next to the SE button. When it has a line through it, that means you are making a change on the selected channel only. If you turn off the little slash by selecting the globe, you are now making that pre-post change to all channels. So make sure you have that set to the correct thing before you make your changes. Once you have it set the way you want, selecting the button underneath your bus will allow you to change your pre and post. Once you change it to pre, you will see the label underneath the bus reflect your change. Something important to note before we actually send level is that if you have not unmuted your bus, you are not going to hear anything. So you'll see here on the desktop software, I've selected bus one. What this does is change our fader on the right hand side into a representation of the main aux one output. You can see that I have it unmuted. However, if I did have it muted, which I've done now, you would see any changes we made would not actually come out through that aux. So make sure you have your master bus fader unmuted. The same instruction goes for iOS. On the right hand side, if I select my bus one, then my main fader turns into a representation of what's going out on aux one. And if it's muted there, I won't hear anything. So make sure that your bus one is unmuted in this way. And of course the same is true for Android, but the layout's a little different. So on the right hand side, you have a couple of ways to get in and make sure you're unmuted on your bus master. You'll notice in the first column on the right hand side, you have the button labeled bus one with an arrow. That chooses the bus you're looking at and right below that is bus master. 
If I press bus master, it brings me to a view with only the bus that I'm looking at available. So I can mute or unmute on this page. Conversely, on the far right column, if you press the bus button, this shows you all of your bus outputs. So you can mute or unmute from here as well. If you're confused about what bus you're working on, then really the bus one master is probably the way that you want to do it to avoid confusion. Now that we have our aux set to pre-fader, it's time to send some level. For this demonstration, I have a microphone here and it's set up on channel one, and then I have a speaker set up on aux output one. On PC and Mac desktop software, you have two ways to send level to your aux. You start by selecting the channel you want to send. And then on the main window, where you usually have your main left right selected, you can select bus one. Remember that buses on here are the same as auxes. So bus one references aux one, bus two references aux two, and so on. So once you've selected your bus, you'll notice you have a yellow ring around each channel. This means you have sends on fader activated. And what this does is it turns each fader into a level sending mechanism to your bus. So because I have my microphone on channel one and I have sends on faders activated for bus one, if I raise fader one, because we're set to pre-fader, you are going to start hearing audio coming through a speaker that I have set up. It might sound a little weird on the recording. You might get some phasing or delay, but you should be able to hear that my voice is now amplified. So that's way number one. And you'll notice that up here in the channel window, you can actually see this fader on bus one referencing what I've just done with the main fader. So if I pull it down, you'll hear that I'm disappearing and you'll notice that this other fader in the channel information window has also gone down. This is the second way that you can send signal. If I go back to the main left right bus on my main page, I can now use this smaller fader in the information window to do the same thing we just did with sends on fader. And what this allows me to do is not have to turn sends on fader on for every channel while I'm in the middle of a, of a main mix happening. So right now this fader, you can see I'm making sweeping moves and it's not changing anything with my voice. Because we have main left right selected, this is now only affecting anything going out your main left right or your front of house speakers. And this is why pre-fade is important. So I can have my mix for all my instruments set to whatever I need to have it set to, and then to only change what's going to my monitor to get it set properly for me on stage, I'm going to use this small fader or I'm going to switch to sends on fader. And anything we do while sends on fader is selected or with this smaller fader has no effect on the main output and vice versa. If we're only using this to do our sends instead of sends on fader, any changes we make to the main house mix will not be reflected in our monitor mix. To send level to our bus on iOS, we have the same two options that we do on the desktop software. For instance, right now I have the main left right bus selected. So my faders, they're the mix for the main house. But if I select bus one, this has now turned my faders into sends on faders. I know it doesn't show you the same outline the way it does on the desktop, but it is set to sends on faders. You'll know this is true because if I raise this fader up and down, you can actually see in the other window right now that this is being reflected on the desktop software only on the bus send fader. It's not actually happening in the main mix window. So that's method number one. Method number two is the same as it is on desktop. Selecting the main left right bus turns our faders back into our main house mix. And if I have the channel selected and then select the sends tab at the top, I now have my bus send faders, the same small ones that we did in the channel information window on desktop available to me. In this case, it's bus one. So you can see I'm making a change right here and this will be reflected in the desktop software. And you can hear that it's altering what is happening with my voice in the speaker. So that's how you get signal to your bus the second way on iOS. 
To make these changes on an Android device, we actually have the same two options, but it's laid out a little bit different for option number one. So you'll notice that on my Android device, I have channels one to eight selected. And there's another row to the left of that. Further down that row, you'll see a button labeled send to fader. That does exactly what you think it does. So if I select send on fader, now my main faders listed, in this case channels one to eight, have become sends to my bus one. How do we know it's going to bus one? Well, right below the send on fader button is another button and it has the bus that I'm sending to with an arrow. So if I click on that, it allows me to change where I am sending information. With bus one selected, we know that our sends on fader are now sending signal to bus one. So if I raise that first fader, you're gonna hear it's affecting me through the speaker. And you'll also see it, once again, reflected on the desktop software. So that's how you do it the first way. The second way is to turn off sends on fader and to select the channel you want to affect. Then once you're in this view, click the send button, and now we have that same smaller fader for bus one that we had in every other version. Raising this fader up and down will change the amount of signal being sent to bus one. Now that we've taken these steps, you should have a pretty reasonable amount of level going to your monitor mix. If you did still need to turn your monitor mix up and down overall without affecting individual channel levels going to your bus, what you can do here on desktop is you could select bus one, and then this fader is the actual amount of level going out of the auxiliary output. So if I turn this up, my overall aux mix is going to go up, and if I pull it down, my overall monitor mix is going to come down. Pretty self-explanatory. The same is true on your other devices. By selecting your bus one, you'll get a fader view that lets you turn the overall volume up and down. So that's it, we've successfully set up a monitor mix using aux one. Everything we did for aux one is true for every other aux. So simply repeat the steps for each instrument you wish to send to your mix and for each other aux output where you wanna have a monitor send. And remember, Every monitor send can be individual from the one before. You don't have to just send one mix to all your monitors. You can build an individual mix for every monitor you have attached to an aux output. So there we go. I hope that was interesting or fun or educational. And if it was any of those things, please be sure to like and share and subscribe and please comment, let us know um, what's working for you, what's not. If you have specific issues, not just related to auxiliary sends, but if there are other things you're having trouble with, put that in the comments and we'll try to do videos that are specific to the things that you need to know. If you wanted to help out the channel, you can uh, purchase a super like, which helps us out, or you can check out our Patreon. With that said, thanks for watching and we'll see you next time here on Quick and Easy Quickies. See ya.